you. Or my senior advice would be to actually go to study hall because you may need it one day. My senior advice would probably be to not worry about too much and have fun. Make memories. Don't get overly stressed out or you'll get a stress fracture. My senior advice is that Mrs. Garrett's class isn't too hard, so don't worry about it. Advice. Don't try and do too many things at once. Job, work, school, sports. Uh, it gets way too stressful. Just chill. See, uh, my senior advice would be uh, if you have a chance not to come to school, don't go to school. Your advice is to take your SAT early so that you don't have to take it before a home game and freak out your entire team. My senior advice would be to get to know your teachers because they're really awesome and to go on a mission trip because it can change your life. My senior advice is to never study for a physics test and never to brush your hair because it doesn't matter. <laughs> Never bunt and hit dingers would be my senior advice. And always trust in Jeff. My senior advice, just don't be stupid. My senior advice is to play as much ping pong as you can. There's a ping pong in the dungeon and to make use of it. My senior advice would be to live in every moment. Um, my senior advice would be to Never just don't talk while you're trying to back out of the parking lot because you will hit a senior boy and he will be not happy about it and it will just be really scary. My senior advice is don't worry about trying to please everyone because it's never going to happen. So just be yourself. My senior advice would be know your limits. My senior advice is to be Miss Powell's TA so you can have spontaneous dance parties in the office as well as have all access to the teacher's food. My senior advice is don't listen to me. I don't have any. My advice is to take English honors instead of regulars. Uh, my senior advice would be not to haze the freshmen. It's uh, not a good idea. My senior advice would be to love yourself for who you are. My senior advice would be to lead a small group because it really will change your lives and to really like dig in deep with those girls and boys. My advice is don't wait until the last minute to do the homework especially in Ms. Garrett's class. My senior advice is procrasti procrastination isn't that bad because I've been doing it all year and I've been fine. Uh, go to Israel. It's fun. My senior advice would be that if you do really good on your math tests, you don't have to turn in your homework. Take the SAT as soon as you can so you can take it again. My senior advice is take blow-off classes. This way you can sleep through your alarms in the morning. Uh, my senior advice is don't get into a wreck on the loop because you'll get made fun of it for the rest of your life. My senior advice is don't vote for Bernie Sanders. My senior advice is to be nice to teachers because if they like you, they're that much more likely to pass you. My senior advice would be to turn in all of your math homework so you don't have a 55 the last day of the sixth week. My senior advice is to take a nap every time you get the chance. My senior advice is don't get your eye cut open in the middle of a one-act performance and go to the ER for three hours. Okay, my uh, senior advice is to not drink two cups of uh, sleepy time tea in the morning because uh, You'll end up in the boys' bathroom, and somebody will find you in there. My senior advice is to not cheat on anything in school because you will get caught, and then you will have to run 50 miles worth of lines for Coach Cat in the practice. Uh, my senior advice would be to quit all sports and become a golf manager. Uh, my senior advice would be, when making the senior advice video, to um, have a backup in case you accidentally delete the videos because you will have to retake them again a second time. Uh, my, my senior advice is to be a good student. Well, uh, thank you Sloan for making that uh, advice video. Um, today we're going to be, uh, I was asked to do some senior advice as well. And, um, you know, I was uh, thinking a lot about this and uh, praying a lot about this. And uh, my name is Caleb, by the way. <laughs> if you don't know me, uh, if you don't know me, um, it's probably pretty strange because uh, my family's pretty much all over Trinity. My mom's in the office. My sister's a teacher in the hallway. Hallie's a sophomore. I have two brother-in-laws that work here. So I mean, uh, Hayslip family's pretty much uh, Trinity as can be. Um, and so uh, I was thinking a lot about uh, what advice to give to the student body here, and I um, uh, thought about this uh, one passage in Peter, and uh, he's writing, uh, Peter, if you don't know him, he's one of the 12 disciples, uh, he was the one that denied Christ three times, he was also one that was 
upside down. So now that you kind of got a general idea of who he is, um, he, he writes these letters out of Second Peter to uh, these people who are being um, persecuted for what they believe. And uh, it's really an amazing passage. And um, he talks first uh, in the first letter, talking about the good things in life. Uh, he talks about God's characteristics, how we can apply those to our lives, how we can look at Christ in, uh, in a manner and uh, take his characteristics that he's given us and uh, live a better life. Second letter talks about these uh, false prophets, warns against them, talks about how um, this amazing thing that's coming, these false preachers and false teachers will lead us astray from that. And that leads into um, this uh, third letter, and it's talking about God's coming. And um, it's an amazing passage. It's, uh, for Christians, it's, one of the, it's probably the second biggest reassurance that we have in our Christian faith. The first is that Jesus is the Son of God. He came down and he died for our sins. Second biggest is that Jesus is coming back. And uh, that's an amazing thing for us. And so it starts off in uh, 2 Peter 3, 8. And he says, uh, but do not forget this one thing, dear friends. Uh, with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Um, so this is a cool thing because it kind of ties in with the first letter, reminding us of God's patience with us, reminding us that uh, no matter what, God's patient. It, you know, a lot of people take that uh, days like a thousand years, years like a day, and do the whole creation thing. And, um, you know, that's a, it's a great theory. But, you know, where Peter's getting at here is that God is wanting us to uh, live this life to glorify him. And uh, he, he goes on to show us um, how to do that. So, um, funny story about this uh, patience thing. I was at Guthrie's house, and uh, he had just gotten his new German shepherd named Bug, uh, weird name for a dog. And uh, we went there, and Guthrie's like, yes, dog's really soft, set it on the bed, petting it, and all of a sudden I look down, and there's pee all over the bed. Guthrie gets so mad. He's like, oh, my gosh, this stupid dog. Throws him in the kennel. And we're like, okay, fine, you know, the dog will be fine. Sitting there watching TV, terrible smell. We're like, what is that smell? Opens the kennel, the dog seriously pooped everywhere. It was disgusting. And uh, so in that story, I guess you could say that Guthrie uh, had to be patient with his dog. He had to teach him these things to make him a better dog. And, uh, you know, God, uh, not to compare us to dogs here, but God kind of wants to do that with us. He wants us to, uh, we, we do these things in our life. We fail at things, and he wants us to get back up, and he wants us to, he, he's patient with us and waits for us to get better. And so um, he goes on in verse 10 to say that, but the day of the Lord will come like a thief. We hear this verse a lot, and I think a lot of us kind of take it for granted because uh, we hear it so much. And um, it's really just the, the key part of this verse because although God is patient with us, he is coming back. He's got to fulfill that promise with us. Um, so he goes on to say that the heavens will disappear uh, like a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. And uh, I know about you all, but I don't really want to be there for that. And so um, this next verse is kind of what I want to hit on today. Uh, it says, since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? Uh, this is a key question for Christians today. We go to these church camps, we live our lives as Christians, and we say, how do I know that I'm saved? How do I know that what I did, what prayer I made will get me into heaven? And we, we ask everybody. It's this huge question. There's thousands of books written on it all over the world. And we ask ourselves, are we saved? And although I can't answer that for you, um, Peter here gives us a pretty good representation of how you know. Um, he says, you ought to live a holy you have to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. So here's the big answer here. Uh, you got to look forward to God. You got to look forward to his coming. You got to look forward to uh, not only his, uh, you know, our, but you got to look forward to him coming back because that's the biggest reassurance we have. And uh, if you don't, you're not going to get those benefits. So kind of another funny story. How, how many of you? Uh, went to McFerrin's uh, camp or bowling time, something like that. All right. Okay, believe it or not, I am a um, four-year veteran 
of McFerrinized. I have been McFerrinized four times. Um, <laughs> it's true, I promise. And uh, <laughs> I went to this camp uh, over and over again, and I did the workouts, but I didn't do it wholeheartedly. I didn't look forward to the benefits of what this McFerrinized camp could give me, i.e. abs or something nice like that. Uh, you know, that would have been great. Um, so I didn't look forward to it. I kind of, you know, didn't try my best. I didn't do things. I, I still remember this one time I was uh, working out doing these. Uh, we had the box there, and we had the bar on our backs, and we were doing step-ups. And I was with uh, Craig Ewald and Garrett Henson, and we were doing three sets of 12 and started out, you know, started out strong one, four, 12. Okay, and then I, I called it good, and I, I did that, like, the whole time. And so um, you know, everybody kind of thought it was funny, but uh, in the end, I kind of you know, regretted that. But, um, you know, I, I think it's kind of where we're at today as Christians. Uh, we get into this, not McFerrinized life, but we get into this Trinitized life, where we're living this life in this Trinity bubble where um, that stuff is just taken for granted. We take for granted our Bible study. We take for granted the chapel. We take for granted the... Uh, the Bible class and all these things that we have opportunities to, to grow in our lock, walk with Christ. And we're not looking forward to this benefit of kingdom life with God. And so I wanted to say um, these four key things, and I can't explain them all enough uh, to the point where you need to understand them, but there's these four R's. Uh, my dad preached on these a lot, and I think they're a great way to look at our life as Christians. Uh, these four R's are a great way to remember and realize what you're doing with your life. And so it starts off with receive. I'd probably say about 90% of us have received Christ into our hearts, uh, received the grace that God has for us, but a lot of times we're not receiving a relationship with him. Um, I'm going to tell you something, and uh, this might seem harsh a little bit, but uh, you know, receiving Christ or uh, believing in him, believing in God just alone doesn't get you anywhere. I'm sorry. Uh, you have to have a relationship with God. Some prayer that you made at eighth grade camp or uh, some church camp along the line or at four, four years old or something like that, that's, that's going to get us nowhere. You have to receive this relationship with God and move forward with your life. You can't uh, uh, slack around and cut corners like I did at McFerrinized camp. You know, you've got you to gotta work at this. Second R is resist. Um, after we've received Christ into our hearts. We've received that relationship with him. The biggest thing uh, today in this world is to resist the evil temptations of this world. Um, this awesome verse, uh, I think, uh, actually, I don't know who said it because, well, uh, it says, uh, uh, we've died in our transgressions. We've moved on from the old and moved on to the new. We're living this new life. Um, when I say we put off the old, I'm kind of talking about this human nature that everybody talks about. Uh, we were born into this human nature. And I really think that what this verse is saying is that it's, we're putting that off that old human nature and we're moving on in this new life with Christ. And yes, hey, don't hear me wrong here, we're still living under this world of temptation. We're still living under the, the principalities of this world. And, you know, we're, not, we're not just without sin. You know, that's everywhere. It's at every corner nowadays. But you've got to be able to resist it. So how do you do that? You remember. This is the third R. Remember. Uh, remember the sacrifice that Christ did on the cross. Remember the, 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 the amazing uh, love that he had for us. I mean, he, he went on the cross. And uh, let me say this. Remembering is probably the easiest and the hardest thing we can do. Uh, hardest, or easiest because we have crosses everywhere. We have them on our necks. We have them on our fingers. We have them on our uh, shirts and Bibles. And, I mean, how many of you have walked into a house of one of your friends and the mom has an entire wall of about 150 miscellaneous crosses from all across the world? I mean, it's, it's all the time. And so hardest, because it's so everywhere, we can't forget that amazing sacrifice. He had these two holes in his, in, his, in his wrist and hole in his feet, the lashes on his side, and he was beaten to a pulp and to a mar, and we forget that the greatest pain that he had was the hole in his heart when God forsook him. Because he had the love for you to take on the sins of the world so that you could be saved. As, uh, people who aren't worthy of that, and yet he did it anyways. 
The fourth R is remain. Um, uh, this is huge. Uh, a lot of us seniors, uh, with us being senior chapel, we're leaving this Trinity bubble, and yes, everybody talks about the Trinity bubble, I hate it, but we're leaving this Trinity bubble that we've been encompassed in for our entire lives, uh, and are you ready to take on this world that's out there? Um, in just our lives alone, we've witnessed marriage being redefined. We've witnessed uh, marijuana becoming a, uh, a, a norm in our society. We've witnessed uh, a proclaimed socialist try and lead a free nation. Uh, what is that? Um, uh, fourth one, terrorism. Uh, it's become a way of life in the news. It's become no longer the unspoken word, but rather the word of the day. It's, it's everywhere. You've got to remain in what the Lord is saying, and you've got to do that. Um, uh, looking at the word. So here's this cool verse, and it says uh, in seven, verse 17, Therefore, dear friends, since you already know this, since you already know that the Lord is coming, since you already know this life that you ought to live now that he's given it to us, he's given you the keys, since you know this, be on your guard. So that you may not be carried away by the error of lawless men and fall from your secure uh, position. You know, God's given us this secure position. He's, uh, as we remember, he's, he's come down on the cross and he's given us a way into kingdom life. And you've got to remain in that. You've got to keep that, uh, that, that position of secureness because he tells us in 1 Peter, you're a chosen people, you're a royal priesthood, you're a holy nation, a people belonging to God. And you've got to do that. So I'm going to ask uh, Guthrie to go ahead and come up here. Uh, we're going to uh, sing a few songs. And um, I'm going to tell this uh, uh, one more quick story. Um, how many of you have seen the movie Fury? Anyone? Pretty good movie. Uh, I don't know if I can recommend it. It's uh, rated R, but, uh, you know, it's in uh, World War II, and these guys, they have this tank, and uh, it's seriously such a cool movie. And this one guy, Shia LaBeouf, uh, if you don't know that who, who that is, um, really sorry about you because he's a great dude. Uh, he's nicknamed Bible in this movie because he's uh, posing as a Christian. And uh, he reads this verse in this one point where their tank breaks down. They're sitting at a crossroads, and they're deciding, should we do this righteous act? hold this ground, this crossroads where we're at, because this huge SS battalion is coming at them, and these are some bad dudes, uh, the best of the Nazi people, and they're coming at them, and he, they're sitting in this tank, and the uh, Bible reads to him, he says, then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send, and who will go for us, and I said, here am I, send me. As we look into this world, as we go into our college lives, I want to leave you with this one thing. God has called us all to, the, to live this life of glory, to, to live and remain in him, and to focus on things above and not on the world. Don't look forward to, you know, man, I just, Jesus, don't come back yet so I can get married. Jesus, come back. Don't come back yet so I can see what life's like and live this successful life. Look forward to his coming instead, because if you live that way, you're going to live a holy life. So I encourage y'all, as you go out, as you remain in him, let God lead you to that here am I. Let him lead you to send me, God. Because people out there, they don't get it like we do. They need to know that you've got to receive. You've got to resist. You've got to remember. You've got to remain. And that's up to us. So I encourage y'all to do that. And that's my advice for y'all. Uh, hope y'all join us in worship as we sing a couple songs.
verse again. God, we thank you. We thank you for what you've laid before us, God. We thank you for your scripture and how it clearly displays the life that we are called to live, God. I thank you for the word today. I, I pray that, that we will receive that, God, that we will understand how complex, but also, God, how simple it is to just love you, God. I pray that all of our eyes will be opened to your magnificence. I pray that, that your love is something that we will be able to easily comprehend, God. God, we love you. And we praise you. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. You guys are dismissed.